Hello, hello, and hello to you, you, and you, and welcome to the CDFM study group. My name is Helen Thomas. Today we'll be reviewing CDFM module two, competency two, cost and economic analysis. So we're probably not going to get through all of it because I'm going to break it down into this week and next week's review because there's a lot of information. So the last couple of weeks we covered module two, competency one, the defense budget process, and we talked about a lot of the key players involved in this process, the key documents involved, and so forth. So now what we're going to do is build on the information that we covered the last couple of weeks. And if you've taken the other modules, you'll now see that a lot of this information overlaps with each other. So you cannot take them in individual parts. All right, so let us begin with CDFM module two, competency two, cost and economic analysis. And so I'll go probably until we get to the cost estimating methods, then I'm going to end the video for today, and then next week we'll finish up. So right off bat, you can see on page 225, we start off with the diagram at the top that we saw in section one, which is the three DOD support system. Every function, every mission the Department of Defense has, it is controlled or managed by using one or all three of these decision support systems. We talked about JSIS, Joint Capabilities Integration and Development System, which identifies gaps, PPBE, resourcing requirements are gathered or are received through the PPBE process and the defense acquisition system. So let me kind of recap some of the things from the last couple of weeks to get us back to this point. So we talked about the National Security Council. That is the big higher headquarters of the government. So the council, which is the president of the United States is the president of the National Security Council. That particular organization is responsible for identifying the strategies, the priorities, identify the threats for the country, for the nation, and even our allies. And so you have standing members and you have advisors. So the chairman of the Joint Chief of Staff is a top military advisor to this National Security Council because all of these individuals are civilians other than the, the chairman of the Joint Chief of Staff. So he has to provide military advice. And so the National Security Council, once they determine what the strategy of the country should be or the focus, then they published the National Security Strategy. Big up order. National Security Strategy. I'm trying to make this interesting, right? All right, so the big up order is the NSS, National Security Strategy. So what we typically do as subordinates, all of us look into the big up order and we determine what are the specific things that we are responsible for doing in this big up order. So the Department of Defense, being one of these agencies, reviews the national security strategy and then have to determine what is the defense strategy to meet this national security strategy. So a few things have to happen. <clears throat> the, I, the three DOD support systems, it's best if you learn them in this order. JSITS is the first system. PPBE and defense acquisition system. Ideally, all three of them are working at the same time. They overlap and to meet the defense strategy. But if you view them in this order, it's easier to understand. JSIS is done first. They take the big up order, they determine what defense things they're going to have to do, and then they go to the JSIS, Joint Capabilities Integration and Development System. Who's in charge of JSITS? The vice chairman of the Joint Chief of Staff. 
and who supports him? The Joint Requirements Oversight Council, the JROC. That's his board, his council that helps him do the JSIT. So the purpose of the JSIT is to analyze what the defense requirements are, then determine what capability gaps do we have. Because again, just because we need to be able to do a particular job, it doesn't mean we have all the resourcing already, our resources already in our inventory. And so JSITs, what they do, the JROC, along with the vice chairman of the Joint Chief of Staff, they look at, and if you go to page 226, at the top when they talk about JSITs, somewhere towards the middle of that paragraph, it talks about looking at doctrine, organization, training, material, leader development and education, personnel and facilities, dot MLPF. If you work with the training and doctrine command, you've heard this before at least. But dot MLPF, so they're analyzing each of those areas. Okay, do we have a capability gap in our doctrine? Is it? More personnel needs to be assigned to that particular organization. Where does the capability gap lies? And if it's anything other than material, if it's doctrine, organization, training, leadership, and education, personnel, or facilities, that JSIS requirement will trigger the PPBE process. We just need resourcing. If they do the JSIS, and when they come to material, we need new aircrafts, we need new vehicles, equipment, systems, then that will trigger the third system, which is the defense acquisition system. So JSITs identify capability gaps. Once they identify the capability gaps in the JSITs, the Joint Requirements Oversight Council completes an initial capabilities document. Hey, this is the issue we identify. This is what we need to do in the mission. These are our capability gaps. And in the initial capabilities document, here's our solution in how to fix the problem, how to fill that gap. PPBE process. We talked about plan, program, budget, execution. Who's responsible for planning? The Under Secretary of Defense for Policy, Programming, Director of Cost Assessment and Program Evaluation, DK. The DK is also responsible for updating the future year defense program. Budgeting and execution is budgeting is the Under Secretary of Defense Comptroller, USD Comptroller. Let me make sure. Okay, my volume's up. All right, so and execution again, execution of the programs that's your DK, execution of the budget is the USD controller. And let's say it requires a material solution that then triggers the defense acquisition system. All of this is on page 225 and 226. I haven't even gone anywhere yet. So this is all recap, making sure that we understand where we are before we move forward. So the defense management system or acquisition system, that's the process or the system that is used to guide, to lead, to guide the acquisition programs. But the primary purpose of the defense acquisition system is as they're going through, the main goal is to manage three types of risk. Cost, schedule, performance. Cost meaning if you get an estimate for a certain amount, dollar amount, as you're going through the process, I don't expect the amount to be significantly double, tripled once I complete the program. So managing cost, schedule, how long it's supposed to take that contractor to do the job versus how long they said it was going to take them. So I'm going to manage that. Do I keep that same contractor? They taking too long. And performance, what's the quality of the work that they have done or are doing? That's why you have contracting officer representatives. 
CORs. Your job is to check the quality of the work. So cost, schedule, performance. Those are the three types of risk that is managed in the defense acquisition system. All right, so that's my overview to kind of get us back to where we need to be. Because what you're going to see in the acquisition, cost and economic analysis is more focused on the defense acquisition system for the most part, because you got to do that in-depth cost analysis process, but you also do cost analysis in the PPBE process, but not as inclusive or in depth as the defense acquisition system. We're going to have major defense acquisition programs, MDEPs, and major automated information systems that's going to be discussed in the subsequent pages. So I'm going to go kind of slow because there's a lot of moving pieces when we get to like the phases and the milestones and so forth. So that's why I want to get all the preliminary out the way. So the initial capabilities document that the JWAP or the vice chairman of the Joint Chief of Staff provides for, for the JSITS process would provide their um, input their recommendation on what the solution is to fill the gap. JSIS identify capability gaps. PPBE is how you resource to fill the gap. If it requires, if the gap is a material solution that's going to fix it, then it triggers the acquisition system. So all three of those systems work together in the middle to meet the national defense strategy. And the national defense strategy is created to meet the national security strategy, the big op order. All right. All right. So page 228, overview of the acquisition management process. So this is, again, a lot of repeat. But if you look in the middle of that first paragraph, you see ICD, that initial capabilities document that I just talked about. Once the JSIS is completed, the JROC identifies the problem. That's the capability gap. But they go the extra step in the ICD to provide the solution. Who wants to hear about problems with no solutions, right? So ICD is the broad time phase operational goals and description of what is going to require to fill that capability gap. All right, at the bottom of page 228 and 229, these are some major areas because what you're going to need to know is the order of the phases and the milestones and what's happening at each one of those areas. For example, does milestone B comes before milestone A? And what happens at milestone B? And just because we do an analysis in the beginning to figure out if that's the right solution, does that mean that our acquisition program is in full effect? Those are the kind of questions that you're going to have to be able to answer. So we're going to take them one at a time. So the first phase of the acquisition process is material solution analysis. So think about it. Cradle to grave. The JWAC just told us that there's a capability gap in this particular area. They provided their recommendation. So based on their recommendation on what the qualities, the attributes, what this particular, let's say it's a, let's say it's a, a vehicle, a Humvee or an aircraft, an aircraft. So we need to know what are the key supporting system attributes? What does this system need to be able to do? So that's where you see in that material solution analysis is identifying the purpose of this phase is to conduct analysis and other activities needed to choose the right solution. So you have to identify the key performance parameters. Key system attributes. You want to know what is the system supposed to be able to do. And then 
analysis of the alternative solutions. Because think of different courses of action. Whatever recommendation they give or what this system needs to look like, then you're going to have several, maybe two, three courses of action. Analysis of the alternative is done in the material solution analysis phase. So then when you get to milestone A, there's a decision point at the end of each phase or major decision point, major, yeah. So there's a decision point that has to be made. So remember I said, managing schedule cost, schedule and performance risk is because at every milestone, every stage, every phase, there's a decision point that has to be made on do we continue? Do we deviate to the left or deviate to the right or keep going straight? Or maybe we stop and halt the process. So material solution analysis phase, milestone A. So a favorable milestone A decision approves program entry into the next phase. So you gotta, that's the decision point to move on to technology maturation and release of the final request for proposals for the activities to be conducted in that phase. So you can't start anything for the next phase until you have an approved decision point at milestone A. The responsible component will demonstrate that the program will be fully funded within the future year defense program at milestone A. They need to give you a cost estimate. Favorable milestone A decision does not equate to initiating an acquisition program. So you're just doing the preliminary checks is we got it on paper in the ICD initial capabilities document, but now we need to start putting things into action slowly by doing course of actions analysis. Then we come up with our recommendation based on the three choices and what your attributes, what your system performance parameters are, then this is the best solution. And then that is presented to, you'll hear the term, the milestone decision authority, which is that senior acquisition person to determine if they continue in the process. But just because we are in milestone A and they approve to go to check out the technology does not mean we're in a full-fledged acquisition program. Phase two. So phase one, material solution analysis. That's where you do analysis of the alternative. Then you take that data and you give it to the decision authority in milestone A. They look at all the data, the solutions, their recommendations, the results, and then they make a final decision if they want to move on to technology maturation and risk reduction phase. Entry into this phase is once you get a successful milestone A. So all of these got to be in order. The purpose is what you need to know for each one of these. The purpose of the technology maturate, and I'm keep repeating it so I can remember, technology maturation risk reduction phase is to reduce technology engineering integration and life cycle cost risk. So those are different risks than was mentioned in the program in itself. The program in itself was cost schedule and performance risk over but technology is now specific to reducing the engineering, engineering integration life cycle cost risk. When we actually get ready to put it into action. Request for pro pro <laughs> release decision point. During this phase is to occur the development of the release decision point which is another critical decision point in this acquisition program. The purpose of this RFP is to ensure prior to the release that we have an executable program. All right. 
Next, we have milestone B. Again, decision point. So we go through the phase, material solution analysis, milestone A, technology maturation, risk reduction. I reduce the engineering, the integration, and the life cycle cost. I want to develop that release decision point. When am I going to actually release? And then I move on to milestone B, the top of page 229. A favorable milestone B approves the entry into the next phase, right? Engineering and manufacturing. And for the responsible component to award an EMD contract. This one has a lot, so let me see. Milestone B, very important statement, is the, normally the formal initiation of the acquisition program. So where does an acquisition program typically get initiated? It gets initiated in milestone B. What else does it say here? Approved. So it's, it's normally formal initiation of acquisition program with the MDA, Milestone Decision Authority, that's the senior acquisition program individual, approval of the acquisition program baseline. So now they have, based on the initial reviews, the technology testing, then they have, okay, this is the cost estimate. This is the baseline. Acquisition program baseline is that starting number of what it's going to cost to develop X amount of aircrafts. And it also commits the required investment resources, the money that is going to be needed for that program. The acquisition program baseline, the APB, is the agreement between the milestone decision authority and the program manager for that particular program. That's what they use to keep track. Remember, control of risk for that cost. So that's how they keep track of what is supposed to happen in that schedule, performance, that cost. At this milestone, MDA will finalize the low rates, the LRIP, the low rate initial production. So when you're developing a new program, they don't automatically, let's say we need 500 aircrafts, they're not going to just initially just develop 500 aircraft. They're going to have a smaller amount. Maybe they develop 100. So the LRIP is the quantity or scope of limited deployment. So LRIP in milestone B is that formal initiation of a program. We're going to identify that milestone decision authority is going to approve the acquisition program baseline. They're going to keep track between the MDA and the program manager. That's how they keep track of things, make sure they're online. And also the MDA will approve the LRIP. What is this, the quantity of the amount or the amount of the initial amount we want to develop? The following, following the milestone B review, the milestone decision authority decisions will be documented in the Acquisition Decision Memorandum, ADM. So that's a lot in just that little milestone B. So what I did on, in my book, I don't know if you can see, is off to the side, over here you see some notes, is based off all the key things in that particular paragraph, I put all the key words out there. So milestone B. Formal initiation of acquisition program. PM and the milestone decision authority follows the acquisition program baseline. The MDA finalizes the LRIP. That is the quantity of that limited deployment amount that we want to create. And then all of that approval is published in the acquisition decision memorandum, the ADM. So approval of milestone B pushes us into the engineering and manufacturing development phase, EMD. Entry into this phase occurs with a successful milestone B decision. The purpose, so each one of these 
phases have the purpose. What's the purpose of engineering? To develop the item, build it, test it, verify that it operates the way that we expect it to operate, to fill the capability gap, identify in the initial capabilities document that also will help to meet the national defense strategy to meet the national security strategy. You should be able to tie it all the way back. So EMD is to actually develop and build that particular, those particular items. Some other things you have in here. The MDA can authorize advanced procurement, right? Because we got to buy things if they have a long lead time, subject to availability. DTNE, development and testing. We create them, but we got to also test them in real world, make sure they actually do what they're supposed to do. So development testing and evaluation is conducted. Let me put that here. D, T, and E is conducted here. It provides, the D, T, and E provides feedback to the program manager on the progress of the design. It also evaluates the ability of the system to achieve that KPP and KSS key performance parameters and key supporting system attributes that was developed in the material solution analysis. So we want to make sure they can meet that. Early operational assessment conducted by the component operational test organization will normally also occur doing, so that's that initial test. So engineer and manufacturing purpose is to develop, build, test, those, because remember we talked about LRIP, that first few quantities, you want to start building the item. You don't build it until engineering. And then we move on to the decision point, milestone C, and also the limited deployment decision, because we built it, tested it internally, but now before we can push those 100 items or 100 aircrafts out into the field to get tested, we need approval again in milestone C. So that's your limited deployment decision. So it's two different decisions being made there. Uh, the points at which a program or increment of capability is reviewed for entrance into production. We want to determine, can we move into full production or a limited production versus full production? Because we got full later on. So this is really the limited. Decisions again are posted in the ADM. So let me write that down. We have approval depends in part in specific criteria. All right. And then phase, the next phase. So we have material solution analysis, take milestone A, technology maturation risk reduction, milestone B engineering and manufacturing, milestone C, production and deployment. What's the purpose? To achieve operational capability. So you need the purpose of each. Production and deployment. So the purpose of this phase, to achieve an operational capability that satisfy and fill that capability gap. Operational test and evaluation is conducted before we did a development test and evaluation. Now we're in the production phase, we do a operational test and evaluation, OT and E. The MDA makes a decision, publishes in an ADM. While a milestone C enables the program to enter into LRIM. So initially, once the milestone C is approved, that is the go ahead to start producing that 100 out of the 500 that we need. That is, that initial production is only for that LRIM, which is that 100 aircraft in my example. And later, they have to do another decision point, which is a full rate production decision point. It's not a phase, it's a or milestone, it is a decision point, an additional decision point. 
But let's stay with production and employment on page 229. Entry into this phase, successful milestone C, the purpose to go ahead and achieve an operational capability to fill that need. LRIP is enabled to enter into LRIP. And let's see, after successful full rate production, the program may go into full rate. During this production and deployment phase, the program also achieved its initial operational capability. So if you plan to go on to my um, module four, page 2.8 and 2.9 is going to take up that whole exam because there's a lot of intricate details that are happens at each one of those phases. That's not discussing this one, but as you go to the module four, there's more things going on in each phase and you got to be able to say this is technology maturation. Uh, this is engineering manufacturing. So we said OTE initial operational capabilities in production because we only doing that initial limited algorithm. Then we move to the next decision point. After we get the limited amount, we test those and we feel like okay, now we're ready to go to the full rate and produce the additional 400 aircrafts to make our whole 500. The, that first 100, we put it out there to test it in operation, is doing what it's supposed to do to fill the capability gap. So let's get a decision. So although the decision point is technically reached during production and deployment, and it's not a milestone, it is an extremely important decision point. The MDA is to conduct a review to assess the results of that initial operational test and evaluation. Then the milestone decision authority will make the decision, go ahead and produce the additional 400 aircraft. Then once everything is produced, sent out to the field in operation, they have to be sustained. So here comes operations and support phase. The purpose of the ONS phase is to execute the product. Support strategy, satisfy material, we're going to sustain it. What's the life cycle? What is what are the um, checks and balances that's going to be put into place? Sustainment, disposal. How are we going to get rid of those aircrafts once the life cycle is complete? So all of that is determined here. So this phase has two major efforts. I'm reading the bottom of page 229 under operations and support. Sustainment and disposal. The life cycle support plan. So in the beginning, the program manager has to produce a plan in how once we create this item, how do we sustain it? How do we build it? What are the requirements? What are the attributes? But then on the back end, once I have it, how do I sustain it for the life cycle? So what's the life cycle support plan created by the program manager? In cost and economic analysis, when in doubt, pick program manager. <laughs> and approved by the MDA. During this phase, the program also achieves its fully operational capability, FOC, which occurs when the total quantity, all 500 of the aircrafts, has been deployed to the war fighters. So sustainment and disposal, life cycle support plan is analyzed and prepared by the program manager and approved by the MDA. So that is the fifth phase. So material solution analysis. So then if you're asked, what are the decision points? Decision points are milestone A, B, C, full rate production decision or full deployment decision. So you at least got four. And I actually think they're, they're probably more than that. But those are based on what you've had. Those are the four. And your Acquisition decision memorandum is being updated as they move through the process. 
page 10. So now we're going to look at the relationship between acquisition phases and funding. Is what type of funding do we use in the acquisition phase? So it takes us over to page 11. If you can look at milestone A, B, and C. Let me see something first. Hold on. Mm -mm. Actually, let's go to page 10, that chart. It's easier to read. Acquisition phases, material solution analysis. To the right of it, you see it uses typically RDT and E funding, or it can use operations and maintenance, o &M funds. Phase two, technology maturation and risk reduction uses RDT and E funding, research development, technology, and equipment. Engineering and manufacturing phase. Phase three uses RDT and E and procurement. Production and deployment phase uses procurement and MILCON. Operations and support phase uses O&M and MILPERS. You're going to have to know that and remember that because I think later on, once we get to the practical exercises, you will see that based on the phase, you're going to need to know, OK, what type of funding is used? And if they say, all right, how much funding was spent on material solution analysis? Well, primarily it's RDT and E, but you may have to also add O&M if it mentions analysis of the alternative, because that is done in the material solution analysis phase. So you kind of have to remember where things happen so that you know if a question is asked, oh, well, it's not operations and support because analysis of the alternative happens way in the beginning. So it's the o and funds associated with that. So I'm going to look at this page. Let's see. These are pretty straightforward. J-Rock, Milestone Decision Authority. All right, so the regulations for defense acquisition system, page 12, is covered in DOD Directive 5000.01. So it provides the policies on how you're supposed to run that program. So flexibility, responsiveness, innovation, it tells you an overall acquisition program needs to be able to do all these things. Then for a little bit more on the operational part of it, you go to page 13, 2213, which is a DODI 5000.02 instructions. DOD instructions 5000.02 is the actual operation of the acquisition process. In that paragraph, so you have yeah, that's why I say I go slow with these. In that first paragraph, it mentions in the 5000.02, it mentions the defense acquisition executive. So earlier, you heard me say the words milestone decision authority. All these words are interchangeable, right? So it's either DAI, defense acquisition executive. Actually, I got it over here. MDA. Milestone Decision Authority, same thing. Or who is the defense, the senior defense acquisition person? All the title for those, and we're going to look at them in a little bit, so I don't want to jump the gun, would be the same individuals. So Defense Acquisition Executive, also known as the Milestone Decision Authority at the OSD level. If they're at the component level, it's a component acquisition executive. That is the milestone decision authority at the component level. So that's the differentiation there. The third paragraph talks about at the component. So the component have one, but it also has exception to the policy. There are two components. This includes service acquisition executives for the military departments and acquisition executives and other components. Two components, the U.S. Special Operations Command and Defense Logistics Agency have been given specific 
acquisition authority or responsibilities. So they do not have to go through the components or the service acquisition executive to process their acquisition requirements. So SOCOM and DLA, S-O-C-O-M and DLA ha have their own acquisition res responsibilities. They don't do, they do not go through the components. All right, page 14. Now we're going to look at some acquisition categories. How do you determine what's OSD level what versus component level? Army, Navy, Air Force, at their various levels. When we first started, I mentioned there were major, major defense acquisition programs, MDAPs, and major automated information system, MAIS, M-A-I-S. So on page 14, if the acquisition category is a one, ACAT one, that is considered to be a major defense acquisition program. And it's usually based on dollar amounts. They listed procurement of more than $2.79 billion. It's the ACAT one program. So these are already established levels based on the dollar amount will determine if it's an ACAT one or lower. So ACAT-1 tells you it's a DOD level major defense acquisition program. What does it say on the page 14? On the slide it says, estimated by the USD ANS, Under Secretary of Defense of Acquisition and Sustainment, that is the DOD level acquisition person, that is the milestone decision authority, that is the defense acquisition executive for the DOD level, USD ANS. And it gives you the dollar thresholds. I don't necessarily say you have to memorize them, but rdt &E of more than 480 million is automatically a major defense program. Procurement of more than 2.79 billion, same thing. So designated by USD ANS because of special interests, congressional interests, complex technology, dollar estimate to include cost of all known evolutionary acquisition blocks. So every cost point, checkpoint in that acquisition of that item is annotated in this whole overall cost. So acquisition category one, major defense acquisition program. Now there are subcategories on the second chart to the right. USD ANS acquisition and sustainment designate program as either ACAT 1 Delta or ACAT 1 Charlie. You're going to need to know the difference because if they say this is an ACAT 1 Charlie program, who is the milestone decision authority? then the C behind it will tell you what it is. The D behind it tells you what it is. It's a ACAP-1 makes it a major defense acquisition program. The 1D, 1 Delta, the D indicates defense. So it makes that easier for you to remember that one. Defense. So the MDA, Milestone Decision Authority, is also known as the Defense Acquisition Executive. Who is that person? The USD Acquisition and Sustainment, ANS. If the subcategory is ACAT 1 Charlie, the C behind it tells you it's at the component acquisition level. So the MDA is known as the component acquisition executive. So that's ACAT 1 program, major program. ACAT 1 Delta is DOD level, defense level meaning the USD ANS is the milestone decision authority, is the defense acquisition executive. ACAT-1 Charlie, the C behind it, is for a component. Component level, meaning it's at that particular Army acquisition executive, 
right, is the milestone decision authority. So they make the decision moving through each of those phases. Then you, so that is covered in writing on the page 14 and the top of page 15. Then they talk about the components again. SOCOM and DLA have their own process. So when you get to component acquisition executive, if it's a SOCOM or DLA requirement, they have their own approval channels is what it's telling you. Then the next two slides on page 15, is your MAIS, M-A-I-S, your major automated information systems. And that is listed as ACAT 1A. One for being a major program, A being a major automated program. So that's how you remember those. So ACAT 1A program is a MAIS program, major automated information system. Page 2 to 15, that's the first chart on the left in the middle. The USD ANS, it gives you the dollar amount breakdown. The USD ANS could designate any other automated information system as an ACAT 1A. It too also has subcategories. The major defense, the MDA, Milestone Decision Authority, which is a defense acquisition executive is designates the maze. So the USD ANS designates the DOD CIO, that's the chief information officer, as the milestone decision authority for ACAT-1A programs. MDA, DAE or DOD CIO designates MAIS program. So your MAIS program can either be ACAT 1AM, 1A, 1 is major, A is automation, the M is MAIS, so you know it's a major automated information system. So the M is at the defense level. They couldn't make this one too easy and put the D behind it like the other one, right? So the M is a defense level, and the ACAT 1AC is the component level. So the same thing. All right, let's see. Base is listed on page 15, page 16, defense business system. Acquisition program baseline is mentioned there again. That is the same baseline that we talked about in the milestone B. Yep. So milestone B, when the milestone decision authority have to approve the baseline, it's done in milestone B. So this is what they're talking about here on page 16. If you want some more information, analysis of the alternative. Kind of out of place because this is what was covered on their material solution analysis. When the initial capabilities document says the JROC says this is what their mission is. These are our capabilities. Here are our capability gap. These are our recommended solution. It's published in an initial capabilities document so that we can then develop the system attributes, system performance, and have various courses of actions to determine the analysis of the alternatives to come up with the best solution to fix the problem. Page 17, primary responsibilities for analysis of the alternative. Ah, remember that first bullet. Another key person that keeps coming up is the DK, Director of Cost Assessment and Program Evaluation. This is the same individual that's in charge of providing guidance for development of the analysis of the alternative study guide. So think of it as cost. That's your cost guide. So your DK is in charge of the programming phase of P. He's in charge of updating the future year defense program. And he is in charge of providing study guidance for the analysis of the alternative. So I'm going to put DK analysis of the alternative. 
So the bottom line, when we're looking at the system, you take that total systems approach look of bottom of page 17 is from cradle to grave, from the thinking of the process, how much it's going to cost, what it requires, what are the resources, till we dispose of the item. How are we going to dispose of it? How much it's going to cost? And what's the total cost that is the total systems approach? So let's now look at a, some other category of things that we look at when it comes to cost. So I'm going to go a few more pages. This is a lot. All right, page 18 talks about DOD life cycle cost because every item have a specific timeline and life cycle of certain things that are done. And depending on the estimates used, will de determine what type of the total cost approach that you'll have. So you got appropriation categories, what type of appropriation we use. Is it RDT and E? Is it O&M? Is it procurement, MILCON, O&M, MILPERS, life cycle cost, WBS, work breakdown. How are you keeping track of the cost in a WBS? Life cycle cost. There's a cost associated with their research and development, the investments, operations and support, and the disposal of that item. So these are just different categories of that life cycle cost, how you can break the cost down. You also have another document, and guess who the key player is on page 19? That's your DCAP. So I'm going to write it on this page also. C A R D and F Y D P. So the first uh, sentence under cost analysis requirements description says the DCAP requires the use of the cost analysis requirements description and provides guidance on its content in the DOD 5000.4. So DCAPE also is responsible for providing guidance on the card. When do we need the card? Let's read that first bullet. For ACAT 1 and ACAT 1A programs, so there's a major automated information program and a major defense acquisition program, the program manager will prepare and an authority no, law, no lower then the DOD component program executive officer, PEO, will approve the card. So a card has to be done for every ACAT 1 and ACAT 1A program. Let's see. ACAT 1 and 1A needs a card. C A R D. That's a cost analysis document description. What else it says? In the middle, it says the DCAP and the organization preparing the DOD cost estimate must receive a draft card 180 days and the final card 45 days before the planned overarching integrated product team. So 180 days is the draft. The final must be provided 45 days before the OIPT. So that's. That first bullet is in, got a lot of information there for you to focus. I think, let me see how far I want to go. Uh -uh. I think, no, I think I want to stop here. And so now we're going to move into life cycle cost composition. And I don't want to do that just yet. Okay, so I'm going to end the session for today here, mainly because we're getting ready to switch now into transactions and yeah, and different um, computations that you're gonna have to do on the exam. And I wanna be able to focus on those. So I've gotten through the weeds with the DOD support system, JSITs, identified capability gaps, for us to be able to meet the national security strategy, then we need to be able to do X, Y, Z. So JSITs is 
oversight by the vice chairman of the joint chief of staff. He uses the joint requirements oversight council, that's his board, that helps him to do the analytical review of the dot MLPF, the doctrine, the organization, the training, the leadership, the leader development and education and material. If it triggers anything other than material, then it goes to the PPBE system. If it requires a material solution to fill the capability gap, it triggers the defense acquisition system. The purpose of the acquisition system is to reduce cost schedule performance risk. Purpose of PPBE is to resource our requirement. That's the resourcing channel that's used and Jason's capability gap. We went over the phases, five phases, three milestones, and the additional decision point, material solution analysis, where you go over the analysis of the alternatives, you identify the key performance parameters, key systems attributes, milestone A, you make the decision to move forward and what's, what's gonna be done in the next phase. And that's the technology maturation and risk reduction. Purpose of that phase is to reduce the technology, the engineering, the integration into other systems risk is identified there. We develop the release decision points in technology maturation. Then we move on to milestone B. Milestone B is the formal initiation of an acquisition program. That is the normal. Um, initiation of the program. In milestone B, we also identify the LRIP, the low rate initial production. That is the quantity of the item that's going to be approved for the first development phase. And all of the decision is published in an acquisition decision memorandum. In the engineering and manufacturing phase is when we actually begin to develop the first part of the LRIP to test it, developmental test and evaluation before we actually, hey, oh yeah, we're ready to develop it and put it out to the warfighter, give it to the warfighter, is we need to test it in-house first. So developmental test and evaluation, then we go to milestone C for the milestone decision authority, whether it's at the DOD level or the component level to determine if we move forward to production and deployment. When you get an approval in production and deployment, it is an approval to produce the LRIP quantity because the next decision point will be the full rate production decision point. In each phase, we need to also remember, such as operation and support, life cycle sustainment support plan is done by the program manager. So in material solution analysis, we use RDT and E funds, or we can use O&M. Technology and maturation is always RDT and E funding. Milestone B, then you have engineering and manufacturing is RDT and E and procurement. Production and deployment is procurement and military constructions. And operations and support is O&M and MILPERS. So that covers that and that. ACAT-1 programs are major, uh, major acquisition, major defense acquisition programs, ACAT-1. Subcategory ACAT-1 Delta is a defense program. ACAT-1C is a component level. So that's the milestone decision authority is the USD ANS, or it's a component acquisition executive. ACAT-1A is a major automated information system. ACAT-1AM is the defense level. ACAT-1AC is the component level. ICD, program manager. The D cape to this point from module 2.1 and 2.2, we learned that the Director of Cost Assessment Program Evaluation is in charge of the programming phase of P, future year defense program, providing analysis of the alternative guidance, and 
also for the card, completion of the card. They provide guidance on that cost analysis requirements description for all ACAT 1 and ACAT 1A programs. <laughs> and we're going to stop there for today. All right, so this sums it up for today. The beginning review of CDFM module two, competency two, cost and economic analysis. Next session, we're going to complete review as we begin with a life cycle cost composition. That is going to require you to do um, transactions. It's going to have formulas. You're, the, on the exam, they do not give you the formulas. You have to know it. So I like to take my time to make sure that you understand what it takes to build that particular um, cost, development cost, procurement, program acquisition cost, flyaway cost. When we say that, what subsequent cost makes that up? So we're going to look at that next week. All right, that is all we have for today. Ooh, look at my eyes a break here with this glasses. All right, this is all we have for today. This is Helen Thomas and the CDFM study group. Please consider subscribing to our study group via our YouTube page because the more activities, click like, click share, write some comments on what you think of the material. If you have questions that arises from the material, feel free to put the comments out there because the more individuals that go to the YouTube page will allow YouTube to advertise the channel more as people are Googling and looking for CDFM um, study group help or study materials to help them pass the exam. All right, that's all I have for today. This is Helen Thomas and the CDFM study group. I'll see you guys again next time.